Every year we're getting storms that are worse and worse and worse. We're at risk. Climate change is gonna throw a bunch of issues at us. Climate change impacts are already happening today. We need to act. The most costly thing we can do is nothing. New York City Emergency Management provides and coordinates assistance before, during, and after emergencies. We work with city agencies, state, federal, private sector partners, nonprofit, and communities to respond to emergencies and then also mitigate for the future. Emergency Management administers the Interim Flood Protection Measures Program, IFPM, which reduces the risk of surge flooding caused by tropical storms and hurricanes at critical city facilities, infrastructure, and low-lying areas. The IFPM is part of our suite of tools that we're using to combat climate change and address the climate crisis. IFPM is not a permanent solution. The goal is to provide temporary measures today for reducing our impacts from flooding while we work on more permanent and long-term solutions. To ensure the program is operating as efficiently as possible, emergency management conducts regular exercises that simulate an emergency response. We distribute our equipment from our warehouse. Emergency management is constantly planning and preparing for something that we really hope never happens. To do these exercises is really an important piece of making all of us more prepared. You can learn the hard way in the middle of an emergency, or you can learn by doing relevant exercises and seeing what you don't know. It allows you to see where all the kinks are, and therefore you don't have those kinks in the, in the system when the time comes to do this for real. Thank you very much for joining today's exercise. We are exercising in preparation for Hurricane Category 1. Um, that is anticipated. IFPM gets activated anytime the storm's going to make landfall north of North Carolina. And if there are surge impacts along with those predictions, we will get everyone on a call and start discussing what we need to do. So please be prepared to respond as conditions change. For this exercise, the scenario that we described was a Category 1 storm on a north-northeast bearing. Be safe out there, and we'll see you back when you've completed mobilization. The first thing they're going to do is unload the truck. They're going to take a site walk through. They're going to make sure all the areas are clear of debris. Whenever we develop an exercise, we set out certain goals. A big part of this was to evaluate whether NISIM could coordinate across multiple sites with different agency partners and with multiple contractors. We're at three different locations. A bridge repair station up in Harlem. We're at a wastewater treatment here in the Rockaways. And then we're also at a pumping station out in Staten Island. Climate change ignores all of the silos that we've built in city government. The power supply, the roadways, the access, all of that requires us to think across agencies. DEP, DOT, Health and Hospitals, New York City Police Department, the Sheriff's Office, Parks. There's a tremendous amount of cooperation from all of these different agencies. Interagency coordination is the bread and butter of New York City Emergency Management. It's what we do. We've been working with Garner Emergency Services. They are based in Texas, but we also have our own contractor, Tully Construction. It's nice to, to have somebody to kind of bounce stuff off of. We've all learned together, and I think that has helped further those relationships. At DOT Harlem River, we were protecting the boiler room and the electrical panels that are in the basement of the building. Mason Avenue looks like a cute little house, but when you go inside, there's pipes and all kinds of machinery. And same thing at Rockaway, it's, it's a huge underground system and all of the pieces that we deploy keeps the water from going down into that subterranean area. The IFPM program includes multiple sites in all five boroughs. The program uses a combination of temporary measures that are deployed as a storm approaches, as well as temporary structures that are pre-deployed. The pre-deployed measures are typically HESCO barriers. The HESCO barrier, it's a wire mesh cage that has a fabric lining and it gets filled with clean fill material. Tiger dams, which are the giant water-filled tubes, those we use in a just-in-time circumstance, mainly to fill up those gaps that we've left between the HESCOs. Now we're sucking both these two tubes together. They'll start attaching hoses and fill ports to the tiger dams.
And then we also use flood panels, which you would see more likely around a boiler room or an electrical room to close up that opening. They're kind of all interchangeable logs. Once those are in, there are clamps that go on the top. In addition to exercises, the deployment of the flood protection measures have been tested by real-world events, such as Tropical Storm Isais in 2020 and Hurricane Henri in 2021. For Tropical Storm Isaias, we determined there was one site in our program that may have been exposed to flooding, and that was at South Street Seaport. Fortunately, the storm did not have impact, but it was a great opportunity to see how our measures worked in the field. Hurricane Henri was really unpredictable. We made the decision to mobilize contractors, and then we saw that those sites were not going to receive storm surge, so we told contractors to stand down. Sometimes the storm's not going to be as bad as we initially expected, but it's always better to over-prepare than to be under-prepared. The goal is to make sure that people can get back to their facilities and infrastructure after the storm. Our program is not designed to protect people, and therefore everyone does need to heed evacuation orders when they are issued. All right, so there's two options. At the end, we're going to take a walk through, make sure that everything still looks good, there's no leaks, there's no punctures. Each exercise ends with an evaluation. And while the goals for this exercise were met, there's always room for improvement. We're always testing our assumptions, making sure that our timelines line up. We'll sometimes find out something about the design that needs to be tweaked. The dams over there don't need to be 50 feet, they can be 30 feet. That's why we do this. We can correct them for the future. All right guys, that's it. The deinstallation process is much easier. Gravity will kind of take over and unscrew the clamps on the top. Each flood panel can be removed individually. The more that we practice, the better prepared this city's gonna be. I love talking about the Interim Flood Protection Measures program. We provide peace of mind to a lot of the neighborhoods that experience flooding. It's been really, really satisfying to work on this very concrete program and know that I'm helping the city in its efforts to mitigate against surge flooding. Climate change is a challenge for everyone, and the city is, is facing that challenge. We're pursuing policies for New Yorkers so that they can have thriving lives in the future, even as the climate changes. New Yorkers should know that we're able to operate as a city even during the most difficult of times. This is what we do. Protect the city.